Is Tesla in trouble? Well, BYD's got a, an amazing miracle new battery. Maybe it really is as good as they say, but does it matter? Well, BYD's also got this new factory. I'm covering that later in the week, but I'm covering it now because it's just got to get some perspective. And then, of course, we've got some other Chinese brands who are really, frankly, nipping at Tesla's heels. Are we in trouble? Should we worry? Or do we just need a little bit of perspective? Well, when I need perspective, of course, I talk to Herbert Ong. He's got the information uh, that I need. So I appreciate you coming on, Herbert. Uh, I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> So Herbert, um, this is for electrification, a good bit of information. This is a real quick piece. Xiaopeng delivers over 91,500 EVs in the fourth quarter of last year and is looking to continue that growth into Q1. Those are good numbers. Yeah, I love it. That's exactly right. I think you and I have been reporting on this for quite a while that in order for a car manufacturer, an auto in a, a car manufacturer to succeed, they need to do two things. The first thing is try to hit that 200,000 per year volume of sales. And hopefully it's not like spread over 10 different models, you know, just mm -hmm. two to three, four kind of models. If you hit the 200,000 volume of sales and you have reuse of parts, that's when you can really get to margins and uh, profitability. The second thing is going global, right? Trying to go beyond just one market. And that's uh, the two together. And Xiaopeng is a great company. I think they're going to do just fine. There's, I don't believe that they've hit profitability yet, but in terms of, you know, do they make a good product? Are they selling it at good numbers? And they seem to be one of those that are able to do that. I think uh, correct on all counts. I'm hoping to get a chance to drive one or at least uh, be ridden in one in Shanghai next month when I go to the Shanghai Auto Show. I've sent off all my paperwork to the embassy to get my mm. visa. I just yeah. now feel like a criminal waiting for approval, uh, even though I shouldn't. But I still do even at the airport because, you know, human nature. <laughs> China EV registrations in week 11. Neo, 2,000. Good job, Neo. Xiaopeng, another 7,000. 7,000. Tesla, 15,300. And BYD, of course, blowing it out of the water. BYD is who we're really here to talk about today. Uh, anything about this before I move on? Yeah, of well, course. Well, uh, ruling at 16.6, but those are, those yeah. are not priced like... I mean, those, those are worth priced reminding like people, right, that this is in China, they refer to new electric vehicles, which includes hybrids, right? So number one, this is hybrids plus pure electric vehicles. Um, so that's step one. Step two is, you know, BYD has 42 different models. And is it really one, 42? It's 42. At one, it was, wow. uh, you know, I think, uh, 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 Jeff Lutz was counting that his latest wow. numbers is 42 different models. And you just have to remember that they sell things that are like $3,000 US dollars. They sell things that are $5,000. They sell buses, you know, garbage trucks. They sell everything you can think of. Um, in terms of, you know, the, so BYD is a great car company. I, th I think they briefly at one point, one quarter, fourth quarter, that was when they sold more pure electric vehicles than Tesla did for that first quarter. And ever since mm -hmm. then, they've fallen. Two, uh, we've reported extensively that BYD has significant amount of debt. And an independent uh, accounting firm in Singapore believes that there's $44 billion of debt. So this is EV sales. It's great. Uh, new electric vehicle sales, they're doing great. Um, and so is Tesla. 15000 is a reasonable number. I think you and I have already explained that Tesla's weekly sales in China as they had that transition from the old Model Y to the new Model Y, they're now basically in just like three or four percent away from beating last year's Q1 numbers. And so I think if they had 17,000 next week and the, the following week, they're going to hit that number. And I think we're all believing that that's the case at this point. So Tesla's doing really well. So is uh, BYD. Absolutely fantastic information. Now we've got to talk about what BYD is doing that's pretty unprecedented, which is yeah. building a factory, the likes of which uh, the world has never seen. Every building you see here is part of the factory. These apartments are employee housing, that soccer pitch and those tennis courts, I think they were, I couldn't tell. All of this is part of the factory. And this factory will be larger than the land area of the city of San Francisco. Wow. It is 32,000 acres. Um, there's another picture. I'm going to pause real quick so I can go grab it to show you. This is a size comparison between the Giga Texas 
compared to this BYD facility. That is how large it is. <laughs> yeah. And Giga Texas, for anyone who has seen it, is massive. It's a mile long. It's an eighth of a mile wide. But this is something else. Should we be worried? Uh, well, first of all, uh, let's let's put everything in context, right? So BYD has 900,000 employees. Tesla has 120,000 employees. 80% um, of BYD's business is in auto, but they are also in energy, right? They're in, I think there's even one of their divisions is for rail. Uh, they mm -hmm. do mobile handsets. So they, they start off with batteries as well. So it's, it's like one of those cons consortium of companies. So if you're saying, should we be worried about what? Are you talking about auto and uh, their, their sales in electric vehicles? Absolutely, they are a juggernaut. And I think what Elon has said is that there's going to be the top 10 auto companies in the world is going to be Tesla, number one, and followed by nine Chinese electric vehicle mm -hmm. companies. And BYD will be there. And by the way, even if BYD is number one and Tesla's not, why would you be worried? Um, the most important thing is profitability. I think it can turn out to be just like what we're seeing with the mobile phone. You know, business iPhone has 15% of the market. Should they be worried that Samsung and Android has taken over in terms of mobile handsets? But when you think about it, yeah, there's these cheap handsets that most Androids are making. Sheer numbers, who makes the bulk of the margins it's apple 85 percent of all margins go to apple because mm. they have an ecosystem they sell you music they sell you services software and so forth that's what's going to happen here and so who's the largest company in the world apple was at four trillion at one point so they you know they trade spots but um tesla should not be worried what happens to what byd does what you should be worried is if you're a gas car company now, BYD still makes gas cars. They're transitioning to new electric vehicles, and um, they're doing a great job. So hopefully they'll do that, but they've not proven that they are profitable. Mm -hmm. uh, I just mentioned earlier that you know $44 billion of debt, and it's not just them. It's all their supply chain being propped up by the government of China. And so they'll need to figure that out uh, at some point. Absolutely true. And uh, it's okay for the world to have more than one car maker. BYD... This giant factory will not sell cars that are sold in the U.S. They may not even be sold in Canada due to increasing tariffs. They may be restricted or uh, tariffed in unpleasant ways in, uh, in Europe as well. So there's a lot, uh, a lot going on there that you would need to factor in. So I'm and, not, and I, keep, I just yes. want to remind people as well that today the number one vehicle that's sold around the world is the Model Y. The mm -hmm. number one vehicle sold in China is the Model <laughs> Y, despite its price point of mm -hmm. 60 plus thousand dollar US dollars. And then what happens when, so they're not even playing the same segment, but what happens when Tesla starts selling a you know more affordable vehicle that gets down into the 30,000 US dollars? It's BYD that should be concerned. We'll see what happens to the numbers, uh, but right now Tesla is still selling um, very, very well in China. And when they start selling these lower affordable vehicles, it's BYD that's going to eat up or it's going to be losing market share. I agree on all those points. I would say that in order for Tesla to sell a high volume, lower cost vehicle, they're going to need a factory. And it is possible that there's a factory underway and we don't know about it. Uh, it's possible that a factory, not possible. It is likely that that factory would be up and running in a year from the time they break ground because we've watched them do it twice already uh, and even quicker with their supercharger manufacturing and their mega pack factories. So it is possible. Um, it is okay to root for BYD. That doesn't mean we don't like Tesla and it is okay to do the opposite as well. Uh, and worth noting that yeah. some of the manufacturing capacity BYD has is to build the batteries for other cars. Yeah. And by the way, yeah, the game has changed again. So as these Chinese car companies are creating electric vehicles and they're doing their best to try to become profitable, Tesla's changed the game and starting to push autonomy and ADAS systems. And so now you heard BYD announce, what, three weeks ago? They said that they're going to now they need to offer uh, their advanced ADAS system to all of their cars. They have three different systems. God's eye is what they're calling it. But it's, you know, as we've been seeing in the videos in China, Tesla is a generation or two ahead of Huawei and BYD hasn't even started yet. So my point being that very, very soon, if not already now, when people are deciding to buy a car, 
they want to know, does it have the ability to drive itself and have increased safety? That's now the new value prop. And so now we're going to see Tesla is certainly going to stay up there, but will BYD maintain its lead? Could Huawei start taking over? Could Xiaopeng start taking over? All these others that have more advanced ADAS systems could then become, you know, selling more. So it's a moving situation and BYD was powerful. They can build all they want, but what they need is the software. This is why I love having you on. I'm speechless. <laughs> the, the big topic that people have been asking me to cover, some quite hostily, some saying, this news broke 24 hours ago. How come you haven't already released a video about it? My friends, my brothers, you have to let me read the article first. BYD has unveiled a new battery system. It says can charge a vehicle in five minutes, which could help mm -hmm. it capture further share from direct rivals like Tesla. And I've got a few different uh, stories on this that are all, you know, kind of the same thing. Um, BYD unveils five minute charger and what's really going on. We'll look at Sawyer's post, uh, the new platform, along with a new thousand kilowatt EV charging system that will charge an EV in five minutes. It is capable of, of providing 292 miles of range in five minutes. Now that's likely the WLTP rating. So figure 250, still fantastic. BYD calls the new battery uh, flash charge batteries, saying it has 10C charging multiplier, the highest of any mass produced power battery in the world. Redesign the blade batteries to allow faster ion transfer. And this is a big company with a uh, uh, the ability to put a warranty on there that you can have as much confidence in as you can in any of these uh, Chinese manufacturers. Is this cause for concern for fans of Tesla? Let's, let's break it down. So first off, whenever you hear of a breakthrough in batteries, you have to be skeptical. I think Elon has said this many times. We keep hearing breakthroughs, but it's in the lab, not in production. Now, in this case, I actually think this is real. BYD, BYD has a habit of telling the truth about what's coming next. Well, they're a battery manufacturer. They are partnered with Tesla. Tesla buys their batteries, some of their batteries, from BYD. So they're a battery manufacturer, and they're launching this in April, like next month, with two of their vehicles, the Han and the Tang. And so I believe that this is more likely to be very true than not. So the ability to charge 250 miles, or is it 290 miles? in uh, five minutes sounds great now it's going to be very expensive there's a reason why they only launched it in these two vehicles the han and the tang these are two to three times average transaction price remember we just talked about how byd is typically very low segments they're only offering it to the two jeff lutz says it's as if tesla launched something new and they said only the model s and model x get it any card over 100,000 gets it but not the model 3 model y's mm -hmm. that's fine they need to launch this the question is, in order for some platform like this to actually go and become ubiquitous and to be something they apply to all their cars, remember their cars are very low price, low mar in fact, no margins, they would need to sell a ton of this. They need to do this. Well, maybe they're going to sell it to Tesla. Maybe they will mm -hmm. do what they've done, just like Tesla has, where they've made their superchargers, um, you know, partnered ecosystem, let other car companies do it. If these guys did something like this, let Tesla take advantage of it, that's how they a, sell it get more of it and then reduce the cost to build this and then be able to offer it to more of their cars. So that's a kind of comment one is, you know, it's not something that we need to be worried about uh, today or tomorrow. It'll be interesting to see. But now the second question is, do you think that people will now, is this a value prop that's such a big deal that people will buy one car over another? Hey, I can charge my car in five minutes or less. It could be, but Tesla, for example, has purposely said, you know, we don't need to make a car that's 500 miles. We just mm -hmm. want a car that can do 300 miles. If they wanted to, and they felt that there was a need to make a 500 mile car, they could. But making a 300 mile car means that they can make more cars. And if you can make more cars and last for the same amount of batteries, you can reduce your cost more mm -hmm. significantly. And the cost to the consumer is much less too, charging ways and all that. So in the same way, if they thought that a five minute charging is such a big deal. Now, for example, for me, I have a home charger. I charge once a week and it doesn't matter to me. I, I'm not one that's going to go, God, I got to get that five minute one versus the 20 minute one that gets me up to 85%. I don't think it's a big deal for me, but it's yeah. a, it's a marketing thing, right? It's like, Ooh, even though I'll never use it, I might want it. So 
I, I don't know yet whether or not this is such a big deal that we're going to lose sales if we don't have this. And the second thing is that the third thing is that Tesla and the way they built their cars is that they're agnostic to the battery. They have partnerships mm -hmm. with LG and you know more than I do, BYD, mm -hmm. Panasonic. They have their Tesla has their own 4680 batteries. And so if there's a new battery out there that's better than what they have now, they can go and build it themselves if they wanted to. And if it's a real issue or partner to find somebody that can do this. So I, it's not yet clear that they're going to, you know, BYD is going to keep it for themselves. It's not yet clear. And then what they haven't shared is what is the impact of the battery? Like mm -hmm. if you have such fast charger, what is the, how, how long does it take? You know, how much, how, how, that, how long does the battery last for? How quickly does it die? Those kind of things. So we don't know yet. Yes, it could be that the car is priced, assuming that the battery will have to be replaced once under warranty. And the reality is, and I agree with you on this, if I could buy a brand new Model 3 for thirty five, forty thousand, dollars but for $20,000 more, get this battery that charges in five minutes, I'd say, nah, I'm good. I'm good. That's too much money because yeah. it, they're, Everything has a price. It's like the people who say, well, I really want, you know, 400 plus miles of range. There's a lot of cars out there that have that range. They're just expensive. Why don't you buy a Lucid Air or a Plaid or a, or a, any of the very expensive cars out there? They have that kind of range. They're not flying off the shelves, uh, which is unfortunate. Mm. What's would be interesting to see, it depends on what you think. If you think that selling electric vehicles to consumers is going to last for, let's say, 10 years longer, as we transition to autonomous cars, that is going to rely on wireless charging. So if you start having your car is wireless, as like, you know, right. if, you know, so I buy my Model Y in China, I'm competing with a BYD that can have five minute charging, but my Model Y I can put into the robo taxi service and it has wireless charging. And then it goes and charges on its own because it's robo taxi, then comes back to me fully charged. Do I, I at that point I would not care? And then the cyber caps that they're building, Tesla's building, right? 300 miles, and it's got six miles per watt or something like that. Something the most efficient yeah. car ever made. You know this, you've covered this so well. They did so many things to make the car to be so efficient in you, you know, low battery. Like they're actually doing less batteries, not more. And they're doing that because they're, um, they're, they're the car, they can make more of these cars and therefore can they reduce the price? Therefore they can, you know, everything's so much better. So it's like you're, you're eventually Tesla will start selling cars that are a lot cheaper because it can make money. And then will you pay more because you're adding this new technology? Don't know yet. Right? Yes. Don't know yet. And I would add to this, that those thousand megawatt chargers, those thousand volt chargers, those only exist in China and not everywhere. Very few of them currently exist. Maybe they'll become a lot more common. We don't know yet. Yeah. So outside of China, this isn't the, the, the value proposition is limited there. The ability to get to a station that has that kind of capacity is almost non-existent and inside China, it remains to be seen, but if it is that good, it is the sort of thing that BYD would certainly not be opposed to licensing to others. Yeah. You know this, right? But Tesla's semi, don't they have their, their superchargers? What do they call them? Mega chargers? Mm -hmm. About the same, isn't it? Gigawatt? Yes. Yeah, a kilowatts? megawatt. Yeah, it is. Yeah, megawatt. yeah, it is a megawatt charger, but there aren't any of them yet. Not, right, not for public consumption. My point is that if Tesla started to create these super, these mega for the semis, these guys, BYD will need to do something like this. And then they're starting from scratch. And then maybe Tesla can do something because they all have this, the megawatt chargers um, that they would need to design anyways. You are killing it today, Herbert. Thank yeah. you so much for taking the time. Uh, guys, if you made it this far in the video, you know what you get to do is you get to uh, come see me just next nice. week at the Chattanooga Charge. Uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of really great folks there. And we're going to have a whole lot of fun. And... Um, there's events all around it. You can check it out, chattanoogacharge.com. Uh, everybody else, you know, like, subscribe. Please subscribe. It's free. I don't charge for that. I don't have a way to do it. You can become a channel member or a Patreon supporter or a X subscriber but you don't have to. You can just subscribe. Whatever makes you happy. Uh, I want to thank Herbert for coming on. Check out Brighter with Herbert. He is doing great work out there. And everybody else, stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots in Chattanooga.